All right, so I got a letter for uh, or a response to video 17, Why Aren't Gay Men Attracted to Women? And I just wanted to have a little commentary on it. I'll read it. Uh, I'll post the message to the forum. So if you click through to the thread, you'll be able to um, to read it and also to look up the uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube channels that are referenced. So here we go. Uh, this is too big for a comment on video 17, so I'll make it a message instead. Here's my take on your question. Why aren't gay men attracted to women? when you argue so many of them end up partnered with more or less effeminate men. And yes, it is, as you say, an extremely un-PC topic, as is your question, as is my following comment on the subject. First of all, it really isn't the case that all gay men are effeminate. Yes, Dan Savage and Terry Miller are. They're not flamers, but yes, they ping the gay dar. But if you check out the coming out videos on YouTube and other YouTube videos posted by self-identified gay men, there's quite a bit of range of masculinity exhibited in them. Some of the military guys, for instance, like Russ Marine 214 or A Gay Tomorrow, do not give off obvious gay vibes, which is probably why they can get along in the Marine Corps. For other examples, Carlos 0318, again, I'll, I'll post these. I, I don't know how to pronounce half of these. I'll, I'll post them in the forum, so if you want to check them out yourself and see, you can. Blah, blah, blah. Our guys, you or, you or, or I at least, would, wouldn't in the slightest suspect we're gay unless they told me. On the other end of the spectrum, folks like Gregory Gorgeous and Going Cohen, I might not, not recognize as men at all if I passed them while they were wearing their makeup. And splitting the difference are folks like uh, Wicked, Wicked Cool, Davy Wavy, or Circular, Circle No Star, and many other YouTube posters. I'm willing to grant you that on average, self-identified gay men are shifted towards what you're calling a feminist. And that's a plan. Secondly, given the above, being a straight-acting gay man is grudgingly, by many PC folks who wish it were otherwise, a quality that's very attractive to a lot of other gay guys. Though if you're insensitive enough to put a demand like straight-acting only no fats fems in a personals ad, you're going to offend a lot of people. So finally, I would say that what's frequently happening when gay guys pair up with other gay guys is that they are, to a greater or lesser extent, settling for somebody who is masculine enough even if not ideally masculine. It's a well-known danger among gay guys that very masculine straight guys can be fatally attractive and lead to a lot of angst. Yeah, I've been there, done that. Nevertheless, a lot of gay guys like to fantasize about people like, oh, Ben Cohen. I think he's a rugby player, let's say. The stigmata of masculinity, a muscular body, a square jaw, facial hair, bushy eyebrows, body hair, and prominent package these can uh, also offset, at least to some degree, a shift in speech or mannerisms towards the effeminate end of the spectrum. Uh, hence the modern gay obsession with the gym. And of course, some of the guys mentioned above who could pass for pretty girls might actually be able to attract a totally straight guy, though they'd be risking end ending up like the character Dill in the movie The Crying Game. So there, the masculinity of ga uh, gay guys lies along a spectrum, and even if the average of that spectrum has shifted, the most masculine gay guys are anchored at the same pole of masculinity as their straight counterparts. Masculinity, like youth and good looks, is a, value, is, a, is a valuable currency in the gay world, whether that fact is openly acknowledged or not. And most people have to settle to some degree in their partners, whether it's in terms of masculinity, looks, or age, depending on their own value in the sexual and romantic marketplace. Nevertheless, settling for somebody as close as possible to this dot to the desirable end of masculinity spectrum, even if not situated exactly at the ideal end point of the spectrum, is still not the same as being attracted to women. Though such things can happen, Dan Savage once told a funny story about passing a muscular fire person in the street of, a few times and involuntarily turning his head and then doing a double take when he realized he was checking out a woman, presumably a lesbian. She caught him doing this a couple times and then quipped, you'd like to fuck me, wouldn't you? She must have known she was talking to a gay man. And Savage says to the audience, you know, I totally would have. It's also uh, true, for me at least, and I suspect for a lot of gay guys, that too much masculinity can be a turnoff. Maybe not in terms of looks, but the gruffness, violence, proneness, insensitivity, and uncommunicativeness of traditionally hyper-masculine guys is a total turnoff. Give me a masculine-looking guy with a hint of softness in my heart melts. This may be why straight women are sometimes strongly attracted to gay guys. Okay, so that's the letter, and I uh, just wanted to go through and give my commentary on it. So the first part, you, you mentioned that there are um, some more masculine-looking guys on YouTube. 
I would say some of them are, are actually sort of feminine, but I'd be lying if I if I said yeah, all of them are feminine. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a couple that are, are genuinely masculine. Uh, it, it would be very interesting to do a study where you, you, you get people and try to see if, if they can tell who among these people are actually genuinely masculine. Um, and see if if anybody else can tell. But yeah, I, I would perfectly be happy to say that a lot of these guys are not feminine, and you can't really tell uh, who is who, or, or if they're gay or not. But there are two uh, points that I have. Uh, first of all, you know, let's not bury the lead here. Uh, with Guerrero, the whole point is that most men are attracted to other men. So it could very well be that these guys aren't really gay. Because if you look at science, the way they explain the small minority of men who are gay in this culture is that they are effeminate because they're born that way. Now, if you get gay guys who are masculine and they're gay, the question arises, maybe they're actually not genuinely gay. Because same-sex attraction, according to Guerrero, is not the only thing that makes somebody gay. Okay, Gay is same-sex attraction plus effeminacy. Well, that's what science says, but Guerrero says, wait a second, you have all these other guys, especially in ancient cultures that had sex with other men. What's up with that? You know, they have to be masculine. They like other men. That doesn't make them effeminate, which means that men who are attracted to men and they're masculine, they can be gay. And in many ways, maintaining that there's masculine gay men when in fact you could just say that they're Guerreros or you could figure out some other kind of category for that. A lot of this is used to maintain what I think is a very disingenuous separation. So if you say, oh, I'm gay, that doesn't impact the straight person at all. Whereas with Guerrero, what we're saying is that there's no such thing really as straight people. I mean, men are attracted to women, but not exclusively if we look at all the evidence, okay? So it's very safe to say, oh, I'm gay and I'm masculine, because then you don't have to deal with the fact that in ancient cultures, most men did, were not exclusively heterosexual, okay? And so, for example, one of the guys you mentioned, uh, A Gay Tomorrow, uh, he has a video on, a kind of sarcastic video on why I chose to be gay. And his whole point is, yeah, I didn't choose to be gay. Well, or, or I didn't choose to be gay. Straight people didn't choose to be gay, so that's that. The problem with that is, again, that's sidestepping the issue that while people don't choose to be straight per se, they do choose to conform with the culture and that they would not be exclusively heterosexual in a different culture where same-sex sex was expected or even tolerated among masculine men. Uh, so I, I don't like maintaining that boundary of pretending that only 2% of the population is genuinely attracted to other men. I think that's very dishonest, and it, it certainly isn't going to help. It certainly isn't going to help other people come out and, and, be, and be attracted to other men because the stigma with, with being attracted to other men is that it's still a feminine sort of thing because most gay men, as you recognize over here, you say, uh, on average, self-identified gay men are shifted towards effeminacy. Well, unless there is something like Guerrero that says, well, actually, most men have sex with other men without the homophobic culture. If you maintain these separate categories and just, just say, ooh, there's some masculine men, that's not going to encourage other men to come out uh, and like other men, okay? Because it's still associated with effeminacy. And again, it's very safe because Guerrero is kind of scary. When, you, when you're saying, I'm Guerrero, you're actually saying you're not straight. It's, a, it's, it's not a first person sort of thing. You're, t uh, you're talking about the rest of culture. You're talking about the other person. You're saying, it's not that I like men. You also like men too. You're just, not, you're just afraid to admit it. You have some hangups about it. Culture has uh, indoctrinated you, et cetera. So it's, it's a very volatile sort of thing to say, to, to maintain that um, to maintain that masculinity is or, or to maintain that people are not actually exclusively strayed because of culture. And I know this because I advertise on Reddit and the ad says you're not straight, most men have a bisexual potential. And the angry comments that people get like, oh don't tell me about my sexuality. It's like it's a fucking free book. I mean I'm not, you know, shoving my cock down your throat. 
You know, I'm just telling you that there's this thing out there. So even telling people that, well, you know, your sexuality might not be what you think, that is an extremely volatile sort of thing to say. Uh, let's see. So now, you also say, and splitting the difference are folks like uh, Davy, Wavy, and Circle No Star. The problem is I don't think they really split the difference. If you can tell that somebody is gay, and Davy, Wavy, you can tell he's gay. He might not be as gay as unicorns farting rainbows, but you can still tell that he's gay, which means that gay is more than just a sexual orientation. Because if you can tell somebody outside the bedroom if they're gay, well, their gayness then is not just, um, is not just about sex. Let's see here. Hmm. Okay. Oh, you talk about um, the stigmata of masculinity, that um, if people are muscular, if they have certain masculine superficial attri attributes, that that overcomes um, speech mannerisms and effeminacy in, in other aspects. So, you know, you go to the gym, and this is if you look up Tom of Finland, what, what I've always didn't like about Tom of Finland, you can look it up, it's, it's semi-pornographic pictures that this guy drew. And you, you have these really bulky, muscular guys, but they still have this very feminine quality to them. So even, and that's, that, that's the problem is, to me, I'm not looking for superficial masculinity. I'm not looking for aping masculinity. I'm looking for a kind of genuine being, a kind of genuine masculinity that flows from the inside out instead of, you know, I go to the gym and, you know, pretend that that makes somebody masculine. I don't think it does. Um, it's got to be something more more internal. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, here's a little thing about straight, as that straight guys would go for pretty girl, uh, for um, for gay guys who are really effeminate. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's the irony, I think, is that, you know, if you look at classical Rome, and the classical interpretation of classical Rome is that a lot of the men had sex with men. They had sex with effeminate men, so, so it was like heterosexuality. The problem with that interpretation is, I'm sorry, if you're a man and you have sex with another man, regardless of who's the top or who's the bottom, or even if that's, that's what you're doing, that's not heterosexuality. That's not heteronormative. I mean, I guess it could be heteronormative. But the problem is, the reason it's not heterosexuality is precisely because if, if a gay guy or if a straight guy is attracted to an effeminate gay guy, well, that's, they're not going to admit to that, even though what's the difference between being attracted to an effeminate woman and an effeminate gay guy? So, and, and again, that's, that's part of that separation that I'm talking about, uh, that we maintain a separation between, you know, uh, penis into vagina, and then, oh, there's some guys, a very small minority, that like, um, uh, that like uh, penises and penises, and that's it. And, and there's, no, there's no overlap, there's no nuance. Uh, so, so to me, that's, uh, I don't like that. I guess I'm rambling quite a bit here. Uh, and, and then you, now you say, uh, last thing I want to mention. Well, another thing I want to mention. Oh, well, I guess we're going to have to cut a lot of this crap out here. Never, nevertheless, settling for somebody as close as possible to the desirable end of masculinity spe spectrum, even if not situated exactly at the ideal end point of the spectrum, is still not the same as being attracted to women. Well, if you have two masculine guys, I, I would agree with that. If you have two feminine guys, the question there is, wait a second, uh, who, who's the what, what is the masculine attribute that they're attracted to in each other? If you have a masculine and feminine guy, like uh, a guy that you mentioned, Marky e. Miller, he, he shows his boyfriend off, and... Mark himself uh, looks rather masculine, and you won't know that he's gay, but his boyfriend isn't, and they know this. So the question is, if you're a masculine guy and you end up with a more feminine boyfriend, why not any women? Why not? I mean, what, what exactly is the issue there? And on the reverse, you also mentioned, uh, you mentioned Dan Savage, that he says that he was attracted to this uh, very masculine-looking uh, 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 firefighter. Well... If he's attracted to masculinity, which overrides the fact that somebody might have a vagina, then what is the masculinity that he finds in his boyfriend? Okay, that overrides the fact that he's kind of not masculine all the time. So anyways, uh, that's that. I'm coming up at the 15-minute mark, so, uh, you know, I've, I've kind of rambled more than enough, and I'll have to edit a lot of this anyways. 
So anyways, that's that. And uh, if there's any more questions, feel free to ask.